one of the oldest art exhibits in the world. So it first opened in 1896, just three months after the very famous Venice Biennial in Italy. When industrialist Andrew Carnegie opened Pittsburgh's first international art exhibit, he was looking for a different kind of venue. He was saying, we're not going to collect the old masters, but the masters of tomorrow. So every year, then every second year, they brought artworks from all over Europe and the US to Pittsburgh to show it, but also to build a collection out of it. So it's a very unique model, and I think it's the only museum in the world who collects through a biennial. Today, the Carnegie International, or the Biennial, as it's sometimes called, is held approximately every five instead of two years. Daniel Bauman is from Switzerland and is one of three curators of the exhibit. When I was in Switzerland and telling people I'm going to do the Carnegie International, so people out of the art world, maybe 50 years old, they would still know what it is. But the younger generation, they wouldn't know what it is. Because until, let's say, 1990, there were five international over the world. And now we're having between two and 300. So that's also the reason why we decided not to go for a theme, but bring that label Carnegie International back, because that puts Pittsburgh on the map. And big time. People fly in from all over the world just to see the collection. In terms of culture, I would say the most important event. Still people are traveling here from Switzerland, from all over Europe, from New York. They still come to Pittsburgh. And they're not disappointed at what they see. Visitors can view works by 35 different artists from 19 different countries, including the U.S. But compiling such a collection had its challenges. Tina Kukowski is co-curator of The International. Probably one of the biggest challenges was working in a group of three. We took a decision very early on that we would make all of our decisions together as a team, meaning all three of us had to agree on any artist to be in the exhibition. It took us a while to get to know each other's interests and tastes and proclivities, and in some sense to recognize our own biases. So that was the first six months of the challenge. But out of the minds of three curators came an eclectic mix of contemporary art. So these are 55 drawings by American artist Joseph Yocum. He traveled the world with a circus. He went to World War I. He came back to the US. He established himself in Chicago. And he started to do these drawings. We don't know exactly if he went to all these places. This is a storyteller. But it's also somebody who documents and draws the history of African Americans and also Native Americans. I think he's one of the best artists in the U.S. Outside the U.S., Mexican artist Pedro Reyes is quickly gaining a reputation as not just a contemporary artist, but a social activist. His sculptures are unconventional, to say the least. The project is called Disarm, and what it is is a collection of weapons that have been decommissioned and transformed into musical instruments. Pedro collected about 7,000 weapons that were confiscated by the Mexican military. Pedro talks a lot about how he's interested in transforming these agents of death into instruments of life in order to explore a sort of new potential for what he sees to be very interesting technological specimen. And I think that he very much hopes that it'll gain some ground and that people might be able to think differently about um, how they use weapons. And that's the power of art, to not only inspire, but to transform thinking. Dan Byers is another co-curator of the exhibit. I think visual art, like many other kinds of art, can provide people with an experience that's um, other than what they're used to. And I think in a museum, it's especially effective because it happens in public around other people. A special exhibit on the ground floor of the museum is a good example of how art can change a community. Transformasium is a group of artists who have lived in North Braddock for the last, I would say, five or six years. So we asked them to propose a 
a project for the Carnegie International. So they proposed the art lending collection there, and the idea was that each of the artists in the Carnegie International would donate an original artwork to the lending collection. So anybody with a library card can go and take out an artwork exactly the same way they would take out a book. And it was a way to look at art as something that you can live with and to think about the differences of having art in your home versus seeing it in a museum. And what you're seeing here in the Transformasium exhibit are examples of what you'll find if you go to the Carnegie Library of Braddock, where anyone can borrow one of these works of art. So a really crucial part of the project is an ongoing and changing display of works from the collection in the lobby here. So every two weeks or so a different group of artworks is put on display and so it really gives people an opportunity not only to take works out but also to create essentially mini exhibitions in the museum itself. Outside the museum, a completely unexpected attraction stretches our notion of just what is contemporary art. The exhibition about playgrounds and its history was curated by Gabriela Burkhalter and she is my wife. And nobody expects from a big international exhibition and a very important museum in this country that they build a playground. But it was also trying to approach an exhibition and contemporary art form and yet be able to approach it from an unexpected point of view and a playful point of view. The playground became an immediate hit but not just with kids and parents. Absolutely successful. Yeah, in, in all, on all the action, all levels, so we got one page in the New York Times just on this playground exhibition, which was a huge, uh, you know, huge thing that even before the show opens, we get that attention from uh, a city like New York. That's something even Andrew Carnegie might smile about. But what would he think of the 2013-2014 international overall? <laughs> Probably will be too much for him. <laughs> it's also like uh, we're 100 years later, so probably he will also have adapted to our new times and, and actually like it. And that's what the museum is hoping for visitors, that they'll enjoy this unique collection of art. Our best case scenario is that they've discovered at least one or two artists that maybe spoke to them. I think that it's very rare for someone to come see the Carnegie International and fall in love with every single artist, but if you maybe had an encounter with one or two that made a difference or made some meaning in your life, then, um, then we've succeeded.